Okay, we're back. And today we're going to talk about um, how to add different scenes to our, uh, to our program. So everything we've done so far has been in one view with one controller for that view. And oftentimes uh, you'll want more than one screen for a program. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a button to our program and that'll allow us to change the scene. So here's what we've built out so far. Um, you know, we've, we've added in check boxes and choice boxes and combo boxes and all these great things. What I want to do is I'm going to add in a little button to the bottom here. And when we click it, it's going to take us to a different scene. So it'll be the same stage, so the same exterior window, but inside the scene will be different. It's going to look more like this. Um, initially, it's just going to say, uh, it's just going to say uh, a new scene, but the idea is that we can get here and um, in the next video, we're going to add the table and see how to set up tables because they're, they're fairly detailed on how to do that. So we've, we've talked about this a few times that um, within JavaFX, everything is on a stage and we set the scene on a stage. So if we go to our, um, you know, the program that launches this, we load this FXML document, right? So we called it root. And then we created a scene with root in it. And then on the stage, we set the scene. Well, just like in this show, this is Aladdin on a stage. This is the same stage. And then when they have a different scene, it looks like this. Same stage, same actors, but different scene. And that's the same idea here, is that we're gonna create another scene, another view. And then we're gonna have to move from one view to the other view. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to load a different FXML when the bot when the button is pushed. So let's do that. We're going to go into our FXML document here. So I double clicked, it takes me into um, scene builder. So I said in scene builder, what I want to do is I want to add in a button. So um, where Interesting. Looks like it got a little compressed there. Okay, so let's add in a button to go to the other window. Now here I have um, an H box, so I'm gonna put the button into my H box, which means it nicely spaces it, but it kind of puts it where I don't want it. I really want it down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put a different container in this area. I'm gonna put in, um, I'm gonna put in, let's do an anchor pane. Let's, uh, I'm gonna expand my hierarchy here. So this is the H box at the end. I'm gonna add in an anchor pane. And then I drag my button into that anchor pane. And now I can put the button wherever I want. And let's say, uh, go to a table view. Okay. And we'll keep all these consistent. Layout. There we go. So they're all 200 each. Okay. Hit save. Now, what we're gonna have to do is design another view that we can hook this button up to. So let's go back into NetBeans here. And I'm gonna right click on my project. And I'm gonna say new, empty FXML. And I'm gonna call this the table exam. Uh, yeah, let's do table view example view. It's kind of a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, maybe we'll just call it table. Do, do, do. Call it example of table view. We'll use a new Java controller. Hit finish. And I'm going to go into that that view. I'm going to launch it in Scene Builder. And you see it, it brings up a separate Scene Builder. So in here, um, let's just do 
put in make this a little bigger. Let's just put in a label. And we can say table view. So that's what will go in here. We'll hit save. And let, you know, let's add a button to this down here. And we'll say uh, go back to GUI objects. Okay, so what we'll do is, we'll, oh, let's really just come on now. There we go. Um, we'll set it so when you push this, it'll go back to the other view. And let's do layout on this. I think the other one was 800 by 600. So let's go 800, 600, so they're the same size. Let's see. Okay, so first things first, let's go to our, this is our controller for the original uh, GUI, okay? So we had in all of our stuff for the pizzas and combo boxes and favorite programming languages and golf stuff. Um, so what we need to do in here is we need to add in a method. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we need to add in a, uh, a method um, and to handle the change of the scenes. So we'll say uh, this, when this button is pushed, when this is called, it will change the scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to say action event here um, just because um, we want to be able to read um, we want to be able to read uh, uh, from the button to get the scene <laughs> and once we get the scene then we can get the stage so it's a little bit of a little bit of a convoluted thing so let's take a look here when we first created um, our GUI, right? We say parent, the root, you know, this is just a variable name, you can call it banana if you wanted to, equals fxml loader, and we say load, get the class, look at our current directory, get the resource, which is a file, this fxml file. And then we set the scene, and then on the stage, which got passed in, we set the scene. Now in this case, we don't actually have access to that stage information directly. So we need to set that up. Um, so part of it looks the same. So I'm going to call it uh, table view parent. Instead of calling it root, I'm calling it table view parent. And we'll say fxml loader. So same as before, load, you know, get the class, and get the resource. And here we're going to put in the file name of our new fxml file. So we called it example of table view. So example of table view dot fxml. And then we have to import jabfx scene parent. Okay. So now we have that. We can use that to set, uh, to create a new scene. So scene. And I'll, oops. Table view scene equals new scene. Bring in our imports. And you can see it's underlined over here. And it says we have an unreported exception, an IO exception. IO exceptions happen when there's an input output. Uh, so basically, if you're reading something from a file system, um, there's a potential that we've got a typo in here or that uh, um, the file has some, you know, maybe the permissions aren't set correctly. There's all kinds of things that could go wrong. So it, it can throw an exception. So rather than put this inside of a try catch, I'm going to do the same thing. Because if this is, um, 
if something goes wrong here, I want to know it. I don't want to catch it, right? So we're going to add this throws IO exception. Okay. So that's the scene. And here's what's new. Is we need something to get the stage information. Because when we did it before, when the system built it for us, it passes in a stage. Here, we don't have that luxury, so we need to get the stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to say stage, and I'm going to call it the window, because that's how most people think of it, equals. And then I have to cast what's returned here as a stage. And this is a little bit of a uh, little bit of an event here, or sorry, an interesting path to make you take. Okay, so let's add in our imports. And let's see what's complaining about. Doesn't like get seen. Okay, so let's see. So we have our event that we got from the action event. And we're casting that as a node. There we go. So <clears throat> with an action event, when you say get source, it doesn't actually know what's returned. It knows it's a type of object. So what we're saying is make it a node type object. And then because it's a node object, you can get the scene and you can get the window. And because we now have the stage or window, we're going to formally cast it as a type to be a stage, which is what is expecting. Now we can just simply say window set the scene to be the table view scene, and we can say show it. Okay, so hit save. Now let's try running this. Uh, we haven't hooked up our method yet, so we'll let it compile. We can see our button there, it looks good. Let's go back into scene builder, the other scene builder. Go to our table view, go down to code. And so on action, so when we push this button, I want to change screen button was pushed. Okay, we'll hit save. Go back to NetBeans. Now when we hit run, it should be all connected. If I go to table view, it takes me to the table view. Now we haven't created a controller for this one, so we can't go back. We just push the button, it does nothing. But we get there. So now let's work on the controller for for this. And it's going to be very, very similar. Because all we want to do in this is add in that button. Make it nice and big for you to see. Okay. So now, the only thing that's going to be different here is instead of this fxml document, we need to use the original one we had, which was called fxml document. I think that was it. Let's take a look. Yep. Hit save. And then in our scene builder, we'll connect that up. Go to code. On action. Hit save. And now in here, when we play push the go button, I go to my table view. I'm in my table view. I can go back to my GUI view. So now I can go back and forth between them. And that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.